Hi students! Today we are going to tackle the lesson for quarter two week five part two which is on multiplying and dividing polynomials. Here is our most essential learning competency and reference. We start with multiplying polynomials. As we all know, multiplication can be represented by the signs cross, asterisk, dot, or parenthesis. Now, if we are given the equation 5 times 6 is equal to 30, we call 5 the multiplicand, 6 is called the multiplier, and the answer is called the product. So that is just a review. Now we start by multiplying a monomial by a monomial. So can you still recall what is a monomial? That's correct. A monomial is a polynomial with only one term. So we have here the rule that we will follow. First, we multiply the coefficients. Then multiply the variables using the laws of exponents, which we have learned in our previous lesson. For example, we have 3 squared times 3 raised to 6. So for us to find the product of this, we use product of a power. So in product of a power, we simply copy our base, which is 3 and then add our exponents, which is 2 and 6. So 2 plus 6 is equal to 8. That's why the final answer is 3 raised to 8. Here is the next example. How about if we have numbers or numerical coefficients and literal coefficients? So for us to solve this, we multiply 3 and 2. And then we also multiply x raised to 5 times x raised to 7. So for the solution, we have here 3 times 2 times x raised to 5 plus 7. Again, we are using product of a power to solve this part. And simplifying further, 3 times 2 is equal to 6 rate times x raised to 12. So the final answer for example 2 is 6x raised to 12. For example 3, we have b cubed times 5b raised to 7. So the numerical coefficient of our multiplicand is 1. So we have there 1 times 5. And then we have b raised to 3 plus 7. Since in our multiplicand, the exponent is 3. And in the multiplier, the exponent of b is 7. When we solve that, the final answer is 5b raised to 10. Example number 4, we have two variables, b and d. So we use the same procedure. So we multiply first 4 and 2, and then multiply b raised to 1 over b raised to 4, and then multiply d raised to 4 over d raised to 7. And when we multiply that, we have a times b raised to 5 times d raised to 11, or 8b raised to 5, d raised to 11. And for the last example, in multiplying monomial by a monomial, we have 9y squared, z raised to 5, times the quantity y raised to 4, z raised to 5. So again, the numerical coefficient of our multiplier is 1. That's why we have 9 times 1 there. And then the exponents of y is 4 and 2. And the exponents of z is 5 and 5. Simplifying, we have 9 times 1 is equal to 9. And then we have y raised to 6, z raised to 10. This time, we move on to multiplying a monomial by a polynomial. So it is important that we have mastered multiplying a monomial by a monomial for us to be able to answer the next examples. So it says there, use the distributive property 
then apply the rules in multiplying monomial by monomial. Here is an example. We are multiplying x times the quantity 4x raised to 4 minus x raised to 6. For us to answer that, so is there we distribute, okay? We distribute our multiplier, which is x, multiplied by 4x raised to 4, and then um, x times negative x raised to 6. Or we state it as x times 4x raised to 4 minus x times x raised to 6. After that, we solve it by term. We first multiply x times 4x raised to 4, and the result is 4x raised to 5. Next, x times x raised to 6 is equal to x raised to 7. When we combine those two, the final answer is 4x raised to 5 minus x raised to 7. For example, number 2, we have a times a trinomial, which is 3a squared plus a minus 7. Again, we distribute a to the terms. We will have 3a squared times a plus a times a minus 7 times a. And when we solve that, the result is 3a squared plus a squared minus 7a. For example, number 3, we have 2b times the quantity 3b cubed minus b squared plus 2b minus 4. And when we distribute the multiplier, which is 2b, so we will have this. And when we multiply, we have 6b raised to 4 minus 2b cubed plus 4b squared minus 8b. Now, how about if we are going to multiply a binomial by a binomial? So, a binomial has two terms. The most common method that we use is the FOIL method, although you can use the long multiplication method or the vertical method to solve for this. But for our examples, we will use FOIL. F stands for first terms, O for outer terms, I for inner terms, and L for last terms. And here is an example. Let us use the FOIL method to answer the following examples. For example, number one, we have the binomials x minus 2 times the binomial 3x plus 4. So we first identify the first terms, outer terms, inner terms, and last terms. The first terms are x and 3x. So we write the pair as x times 3x. Next, the outer terms are x and 4. So we pair them up and we have x times 4. Next, the inner terms are negative 2 and 3x or negative 2 times 3x and the last terms are negative 2 and 4 and that is negative 2 times 4 after that we multiply 1 by 1 x times 3x is equal to 3x squared x times 4 is equal to 4x negative 2 times 3x is equal to negative 6x and negative 2 times 4 is equal to negative 8 now observe if there are similar terms that we can combine. From this example, we have 4x and negative 6x. They are similar terms, so we add. So we are adding 4x plus negative 6x or 4x minus 6x and the result is negative 2x. Means that the simplified form of this is negative 2x. So we combine the results and we have 3x squared minus 2x minus 8. That is the product of x minus 2 times the quantity 3x plus 4.
Let's move on to example number two as we multiply the quantity 4x plus 8 times the quantity 5x minus 2. Again, we identify the first, outer, inner, and last terms. Using those pairings, we multiply. So 4x times 5x is equal to 20x squared. 4x times negative 2 is negative 8x. 8 times 5x is equal to 40x. 8 times negative 2 is equal to negative 16. And again, we have the similar terms, negative 8x and 40x. We add them and the result is 32x. After that, we combine each term. So we have 20x squared plus 32x minus 16. And here is our third example. We multiply 7a minus 1 times 2a minus 3. Again, we list down our first, outer, inner, and last terms. Then we multiply, and those are the results. After that, we combine like or similar terms. We have 21a plus negative 2a or negative 21a minus 2a. And that is equal to negative 23a. So for our final answer, we have 14a squared minus 23a plus 3. This time, let us learn how to multiply a polynomial by a polynomial. So it says there, distribute the first term of the first polynomial to each term of the other polynomial. Repeat the procedure of up to the last term and simplify the results by combining similar terms. So for example, we have the quantity a plus 5 times the quantity 3a squared minus 5a minus 10. It means that we have to distribute a times this term, times the second term, and then times the third term. After that, we also multiply 5 times all of our three terms. When we do that, we will obtain this. We have a times 3a squared plus a times negative 5a plus a times negative 10 plus 5 times 3a squared plus 5 times negative 5a plus 5 times negative 10. After that, after we have distributed each of the terms, this time we are going to multiply. So 3a cubed minus 5a squared minus 10a plus 15a squared minus 25a minus 50a. Now we check if there are similar or like terms. In this case, we have the similar terms negative 5a squared and positive 15a squared. We also have negative 10a and negative 25a. So we combine those two. So our first term is 3a cubed. Since there's, there is no similar term to this, so we just copy 3a cubed. Now when we combine 5a, negative 5a squared and 15a squared, the result is 10a squared. And when we combine negative 10a minus 25a, the result is negative 35a. And then we copy the last term, which is negative 50. And that is our final answer since we cannot combine any of the other terms. So again, our final answer is 3a cubed plus 10a squared minus 35a minus 50. Let's move on to example number 2. This time we have the quantity 2x squared plus 5x minus 3 times the quantity x squared minus 7x plus 12. So when we distribute, we will have this pairings. After that, we multiply each term or each pair. So we have 4x raised to 4 minus 14x cubed plus 24x squared plus 5x cubed plus minus 35x squared plus 60x minus 32 minus 3x squared plus 21x 
minus 36. And again, we combine like terms. So there is no similar term to 4x raised to 4. So that is our, that will be our first term. Then we combine this and this, since their literal coefficients are the same. We also combine 24x squared with negative 35x squared and with negative 2x squared. We also do the same to 60x and 21x. And our last term will be negative 36. So again, our first term is 4x raised to 4. Negative 14x cubed plus 5x cubed is equal to negative 9x cubed. So that is our second term. Then the sum of 24x squared minus 35x squared minus 3x squared is equal to negative 14x squared. So that is our third term. And for our fourth term, the sum of 60x and 21x is 81x. Then we add the last term, which is negative 36. We rewrite, and our final answer is 4x raised to 4 minus 9x cubed minus 14x squared plus 81x minus 36. This time, we move on to dividing polynomials. So here are the parts of a division. We have the dividend, the divisor, and the answer is called a quotient. If there is a remainder, then we um, name it as remainder. And for the long method, the dividend, the dividend is inside the division symbol. And we have the divisor, the quotient, and the remainder. With that, let us try to divide polynomial by a monomial. So it says there, we divide each term of the polynomial by the given divisor. For example, we have the polynomial 3x cubed plus 6x squared plus 15x. We are going to divide that by the monomial 3x. So what we'll do is to distribute our divisor, which is 3x. So we will have 3x cubed divided by 3x plus 6x squared divided by 3x plus 15x divided by 3x. And we can cancel 3 and 3. As for x cubed over x, we can use the quotient of a power from the loss of exponents that we've learned last time. Okay, so when we do that, we are going to subtract the exponents 3 and 1. So this will be canceled. We still have a remaining exponent of 2. That's why we have there x squared. For the second term, 6 divided by 3 is equal to 2. So we have there 2. And x squared divided by x is equal to x raised to 1, or simply x. And for the third term, 15 divided by 3 is equal to 5. And x and x will be cancelled. So that is our final answer for example number one. For example number two, we have to divide 8x raised to 4 minus x cubed plus 4x squared minus 16x divided by 4x. So again, we distribute and we will obtain this. Now we divide one by one. So 8x raised to 4 divided by 4x is equal to 2x cubed. By dividing 8 and 4, which is equal to 2. And again, by subtracting the exponents of x raised to 4 and x raised to 1. For the second term, the numerical coefficient of this is 1. So we cannot cancel 1 and 4. So as is, we will only cancel x in the denominator and we have a remaining exponent of 2. For the third term we have x because we've divided 4 and 4 and we have a remaining uh, 1 exponent of 1 after we've subtracted the exponents. And for the last term we will cancel x and x and 16 divided by 4 is equal to 4.
That's why our final answer for this example is 23x cubed minus x squared over 4 plus x minus 4. Next, for the third example, we are going to divide 6x cubed y plus 8xy cubed minus 2x squared y squared. We are going, going to divide that by 2xy. So again, we distribute our divisor and we will have this. So for the first term, 6 divided by 2 is equal to 3. And then x cubed divided by x is equal to x squared. Y and Y will be cancelled. Next, 8 divided by 2 is equal to 4. X and X will be cancelled. Y cubed divided by Y is equal to Y squared. And for the last term, 2 and 2 will be cancelled. X squared divided by X is equal to X. And Y squared divided by Y is equal to Y. That's why our final answer for this example is 3x squared plus 4y squared minus xy. This time, let us learn how to divide a polynomial by a polynomial. So for example, we are going to divide the quantity x to the fourth power plus 4x cubed minus 2x squared minus x plus 1 divided by the quantity x plus 1. So we are going to use the long division method to solve for this problem. So before we start, we must make sure that our divisor or the terms in our dividend is arranged from highest exponent to the lowest exponent. Now in case there is a missing term, we will replace it with zero. So since in this example, we have the exponent of 4, 3, 2, and this is 1, and then this is the constant. So there is no problem. So we proceed with our um, first step, which is to divide the first term by the first term of our divisor. So x raised to 4 divided by x is equal to x cubed. After that, we are going to multiply x cubed to both of our terms in our divisor. So x cubed times x is equal to x raised to 4. So we are going to align it in align it with x raised to 4. Next, we multiply x cubed by 1, and the result is also x cubed. After that, we subtract. But in subtracting, we are going to add, or we are going to change our operation into addition and then change the signs of our terms. So this will be negative and this will also be negative. After that, we can now um, subtract or add. So we have x raised to 4 plus x plus negative x raised to 4 is equal to 0. So we don't have to put that. This time we subtract or we add 4x cubed plus negative x cubed. The numerical coefficient of this is 1. So it's like we are subtracting 4 minus 1. That's why the result is 3x cubed. After that, we bring down negative 2x squared. Then we divide 3x cubed divided by x. So 3x cubed divided by x is equal to 3x squared. And again, we multiply 3x squared times x. The result is 3x cubed. And 3x squared times 1 is equal to positive 3x squared. Again, we subtract. This will be addition. And then the sign will be negative. This will also be negative. And if we add that, the result is negative 5x squared. So again, we bring down the next term, which is negative x. Now we divide negative 5x squared by x, and the result is negative 5x. That result will be multiplied to each of these terms. So negative 5x times x is equal to negative 5x squared. And negative 5x times 1 
is equal to negative 5x. We subtract. So again, this will be addition. This will be positive and this will be positive. So this will be again 0 and the negative x plus 5x is equal to 4x. We bring down the last term which is positive 1. Then we divide 4x by x. The result is positive 4. Then we multiply 4 times x is equal to 4x and 4 times 1 is equal to 4. So we subtract 4x minus x or we follow the same process. So this will be addition, negative, and this will be negative. Okay, so 1. 1 plus negative 4 is equal to negative 3. That is now our rem remainder. So to write our final answer, we write x cubed plus 3x squared minus 5x plus 4. Remainder, negative 3 over our divisor, which is x plus 1. So that is our final answer. For example number 2, we are going to divide, to divide the quantity 2x plus 3 plus 6x cubed minus 5x squared divided by the quantity 2x plus 1. Again, we use the long division method, but we make sure that the terms are arranged from highest to lowest. So we put the first term as 6x cubed. Since its degree is 3 followed by negative 5x squared, then 2x, and then the constant 3. After that, we divide 1 by 1. So 6x cubed divided by 2x is equal to 3x squared. Then we multiply 3x squared by 2x. The result is 6x cubed. 3x squared times 1 is equal to positive 3x squared. Then we subtract. So again, this will be addition, this will be negative, and this will be negative. And the result when we add is negative 8x squared, then we bring down 2x. Next, we divide negative 8x squared divided by 2x, the result is negative 4x. Then we multiply it by 2x again, the result is negative 8x squared. Negative 4x times 1 is equal to negative 4x. Then we subtract. So this will be addition, positive, and positive. So when we add the result is 6x, then we bring down the last term, which is 3. Now 6x divided by 2x is equal to 3. Then 3 times 2x is equal to 6x. 3 times 1 is equal to 3. Then we subtract. So obviously the answer is 0. But let me show you the solution. So this will be addition, negative, and negative. So that is equal to 0. So our, our final answer is 3x squared minus 4x plus 3. For the third example, we are going to divide the quantity 25n cubed minus 6n plus 5 divided by 5n plus 1. Again, we use this method. So, we make sure that the terms are arranged from highest exponent to lowest exponent. However, in this example, if we arrange it, so the exponent of the first term is 3. The next term is supposed to be um, 6n and its exponent is 1. That's why we've included a term with 0 as, an, as the numerical coefficient and has a literal coefficient which is n squared for it to be in order, okay, from highest to lowest. And then the last term is the constant 5. 
if we are sure that it is arranged in order, so we can now divide. So 25n cubed divided by 5n is equal to 5n squared. And then we multiply that. So 5n squared times 5n is equal to 25n cubed. 5n squared times 1 is equal to 5n squared. We subtract. So this will be addition, negative, and this will be negative. When we add that, the result is negative 5n squared. We bring down negative 6n. And then we divide. So negative 5n squared divided by 5n is equal to negative n. Negative n times 5n is negative 5n squared. Negative n times 1 is equal to negative n. So again, we subtract. This will be addition. This will be positive and this will be positive. So this is again 0. So we don't have to write negative 6n plus n is equal to negative 5n plus our last term which is 5. So again we divide negative 5n divided by 5n is equal to negative 1. So negative 1 times 5n is equal to negative 5n. Negative 1 times 1 is equal to negative 1. We subtract. So this will be addition. This will be positive. This will be positive. So the result is positive 6. This is now our remainder. So just like what we did in example number 1, so we write the final answer as 5n squared minus n minus 1 remainder 6 over our divisor 5n plus 1. So again, for us to include the remainder, we have to write it as the numerator over the denominator, which is our divisor. So that's it for our lesson in multiplying and dividing polynomials. Thank you so much for listening.